Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, in this video, I want to show you the finished, basically, castle that I've been working on. Um, and if you haven't seen this castle before, there are some work in progress videos um, showing some of its construction, some of the design considerations. And basically, this has been developed as a practice run for a much larger castle project in a different style, some different elements. But really what I was looking for with this is how some of these basic materials interact as well as, you know, some of the design features, play with them a little bit and see what uh, I could do with these to change them, to improve upon them for the final version of the castle. Now this has taken me quite a while and I just want to preemptively thank the customer uh, for being patient with me um, as there's definitely some problems that happened with this and I'm going to be pointing those out through this video and I don't want to say that I'm not happy with the overall way this has come out but I don't need to focus on what went right. I need to focus on what went wrong so that I can fix it for the future uh, version. And I really want the final version to be something, you know, that's that, you know, sort of a pinnacle of my ability. And, uh, you know, using this as a stepping stone to get there, I think is going to be really helpful. So um, what I'd like to do is sort of give you an overview of um, how it came out first. We'll talk about its general appearance and some of the things that I did. And then um, what I'd like to do is point out some of the problems that um, have shown up on it, some of the things that I had trouble with, and uh, we can go from there. So I should just remind new viewers to this project, um, it's in your interest to go back and take a look at some of the previous videos, as I'm not going to be discussing some of the things that I observed in the previous videos, uh, because I think repetition in videos is um, a waste of everybody's time involved. So um, if, you, if you think of things, you know, before you ask me questions about some aspects of it, it's worth to go back and take a look at those videos, um, just to uh, avoid time for everybody's involvement, because this has been a, a long ongoing project. But Let's talk about what's happened since the last video. Well, obviously it's been painted. Um, what I've done, and I, we will be going in for close-ups on all of this, but what I've done is I've gone in with the airbrush, added a little weathering, um, you know, drips coming off of um, all of the uh, points on the crenellations, well, sort of inverted crenellations. Um, I have installed do uh, doors on the uh, front and the back side, giving them a different appearance. We'll take a close look at those in a second. Um, and uh, painted the, the top walkway. And um, that's basically it, but that, that did take quite a bit of time, and it's, I had to spend quite a bit of time yesterday on the doors. Um, let's turn it a little bit so you can see it in a little bit more of a profile. It's a little difficult for me to show this in its entirety because of its size. Um, and, uh, you know, receive some... Uh, some critical evaluations of adding buttresses to the outside. Um, I really like the appearance they give to it, irrespective of how easy it makes for somebody to storm the castle. But definitely on the future version, um, what I'd like to do, and I'm gonna be taking a look at some major style alterations, but is dropping this down quite steeply, um, probably not have this fluted appearance um, and taper it a little bit more at the top. Um, so there'll be some major changes on these that will look a little less um, out of place on the outside of a wall of castle, but still add some real dressing and give me some space to add in some real um, adornments on them, spikes, uh, metal plating, whatnot on the future version. And so here you can see the inside of the castle. Again, this is um, 36 inches across from outside to outside. It gives you a sense of the stairway um, put in place as well as the accommodation I did at the top there. It doesn't look too out of place, but definitely we'll be fixing that in the future. Um, and you'll notice at this point here, the one thing that I haven't finished at this point it are the um, doors that are into the towers. Originally I planned on putting doors on both sides of the tower and putting in something to block this access here. I skipped that on this project because quite frankly I don't feel like I need to do that practice and installing the two doors will be practice enough. So those have not been added and will be added before um, its final release for sale and final photos. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, but anyway, this gives you a general panoramic of the inside of the castle, as well as at least a glimpse of how the stonework on the top 
kind of, uh, you know, color-wise ties into this. Um, I went with a brown stone color with some light highlights on it, and that's true in the towers. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, and actually, in retrospect, I didn't think about that, but it's kind of nice to tie in at least some earthy tones uh, from the, the doorway. Um, and, and maybe in, in retrospect, I could have even added a slightly redder color to that. I had dabbled with that idea, but I just went with something kind of quick to finish it off. And um, really looking at the texture and the way it painted rather than the color of it for this particular project. So let's take a look at some of the details of the individual sections and talk about some of the uh, problems that I've noticed that I probably haven't pointed out at this point. Um, first, um, you can take a look at the top decking. Uh, what I did is I painted this um, pretty much the same way as the castle. And then I gave this a wash with a Vallejo uh, wash blend and then went back in and re-dry brushed it just to tint it and do something kind of quick um, as it's a lot of surface area in any case to paint. I am not really pleased with how this came out considering the way the foam coat interacted with it. Some things actually worked out really well and I'll see if I can give you a little close-up here. There we go. The foam coat gave an interesting texture to the flat uh, surface of the stones that picks up paint pretty well and gives it a pretty nice stone finish. Saying that, I spent, a, you know, not a, a lot of time, but I did spend quite a bit of time mashing in gravel into this to give it an irregular texture, and all of that has been pretty much wiped out by the foam coat. And it was subtle, to be fair, um, and maybe I might have preserved it by only doing a single layer of foam coat, and I did those two thin coats. So uh, I think for the decking, this may not need as much protection as, say, these corners, and so a single coat is the plan for the future on that. Um, it did fill in a little bit of the, um, you know, the, the detail, the carving in between. But um, if you remember, this piece um, did get a single coat of foam coat here and a double coat here. And I think you can really see that difference, actually. The, uh, scar the carving in between the stones is more preserved in this section. Um, so, again, another indication that a single coat is the way to go. Let's take a closer look at that. You can see, I think you can see from there to there, there is a noticeable difference. Another area of concern was along the top line here. I mentioned that um, the foam coat had filled in quite a few of those. I got some great suggestions on ways to just quickly clean that out in the future. That will be a focus. We'll talk about the foam coating more when we look at the front. But even though it filled it in um, fairly aggressively, there was still enough of a dimple that it was retaining some of the darker color when I was dry brushing it. So overall, that worked out okay. It could be improved, but it came through enough that it didn't look like a you know completely uh, solid piece of stone. Taking a look at the stairs, um, I just went in and tried to weather them a little bit just to add a little more interest, you know, trying to be pretty subtle with it. Um, overall though, I think the stairs came out pretty well. One of the problems here though is um, carving these sheets um, as one piece. I had a little trouble here and there were a couple indents from the hot wire and I wanted to know how prominent those would show through in the finished product and they do show uh, more than I'm comfortable with so I'm going to have to be um, a little more careful when I'm carving these out to prevent that because these creases bisect several layers of stone so it looks fairly artificial um, so that's something I'm going to want to improve on the next version. So here's a shot of the outside of one of the side sections so you can get a sense of that detail up close a little bit more. Um, one thing I noticed, um, I think it was on this one, is that I actually forgot to score a line or two in one of these rows and um, a couple of them have been filled in um, fairly heavily and I'll show you a spot where I tried to fix that um, in a second. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Um, the other thing that I noticed, and um, this is where some of those problems come in, is that when I was painting it, all right, so I'm setting it on the table and I'm leaning it forward to paint the back half, um, not applying a lot of pressure, but definitely doing a little leaning. Because this foam is so soft, even with the foam coat, I'm getting a slight rounding on these edges. And uh, here, in fact, you can see I did a quick repair. Uh, is that going to focus? Come on. There we go. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a simple touch-up. It took two seconds. But the, um, the foam coat's great. 
but because it's beaded, um, the beads puck out, you know, from themselves, and it, it hasn't happened frequently. I mean, I'm not going to say this is falling apart. It's it's fairly durable, but it's not quite at the level that I I want. And the new version, the final version, I should say, is going to be significantly taller than this, and is going to have more weight per section as a result. So this is something that I need to consider, and I'm debating right now about basing it um, on hardboard or something like that to give the bottom a little bit more protection. And I'm going to have to talk to the customer. Of course, this is sort of an intro to that idea, um, but um, it might be something needed to give a little bit more substance to these bases so that they don't ding or dent when there's rocking motion from setup, transportation, and the like. Um, the magnets are, you know, well embedded. I haven't had any problems with them pucking out, so I've been very pleased with that overall. Uh, let's see, what else can I mention about this piece? Um, not too much, not too much. That gives you a little sense of the sidewall. So looking at the center section, this is where most of the, you know, testing was, has been done, some of the newest additions. Um, and uh, first, let's just work our way from the top down. One of the things I noticed, let's see if I can get that in, there we go, is um, the tower tops in particular suffered the most from foam coat filling in the pattern of the carving. Um, these suffered really aggressively and in fact some areas it's been co almost completely covered in and doesn't really show at all. I'm pretty disappointed with that so again going back to one coat is really the maximum I can do on these hand carved areas as they are considerably more shallow than these. I could carve them more deeply but the, when you carve it more deeply the lines between the blocks get wider and that's going to sort of look wrong I think on a cobblestone pattern so I'd rather keep them shallow keep them narrow and coat them less. Taking a look at the entryways um, you know after um, some comments from different uh, viewers in the past video, and uh, you know some good good suggestions, um, you know this will be inlaid. I'm going to change this shape, make it smooth, maybe with only a few um, a prominent points on it, and um, I should be able to insert that into the wall so it's flush. Of course, what I wanted to see is how much of a textural change this has versus this stonework in the back, and I really like the way this came out. It does look a bit smoother. It's not, you know, it doesn't look like glass. I mean, it shouldn't, but it definitely has a different texture that sets it apart from the wall texture, which is really what I was looking for. So I think inlaying this into the wall is going to work very well. Um, it may add some challenges with carving on the inside, which I did not do for this. Um, I just left it raw on those inside areas again because um, I'm trying to get through this piece so I can start on the final version and um, this is going to be similar work to what I've done in the past so didn't really need to, to, to practice too much in that area. I did however want to try the doors out and see what I could come up with and what I've done is I have used a um, styrene sheet that is molded to look like wood. Uh, I was going to make the door plank by plank and in the end I decided uh, that is not going to be fast and this uh, planking actually looks pretty decent. Um, I think it came out better than I expected and I really thought the scale works well uh, and overall um, not a bad job. Use some styrene card to um, you know make the strips uh, and some rivets and then what I tried to do now you see I'm, I'm going to lean this on those front we're going to take a look at those front in a second those front buttresses um, and what I did is um, I made a couple rings for the door handles and then I um, wanted to create some kind of a crossbar, you know, the, the bar that they drop in at, into these sort of U-shaped uh, joints, you know, to, to lock the door, so to speak, from barring it, I guess, was from uh, entry from the outside. So I, I built um, little tiny U-joints there, glued those in, and uh, made a sort of faux, you know, hinge pivot point. Let's see if I can give you a close-up of that. There you go. Well, that's a pretty good close-up. Um, the rings, not as good as I had hoped, but I again, I just kind of quickly put them together. I figured I'll do um, a slightly nicer job for the final version. And you can see some of the rusting effects. The rusting effects have been done with uh, Model Mates rusting liquid. It's, Model Mates weathering liquids are fantastic. Um, I still I haven't done a review of them yet. I should consider this an intro to their products. Um, really, really like working with them, especially for something like this. But that gives you a sense of the inside door. And here we see the outside door. 
And I wanted something a little different for the outside door, so I put in different kinds of um, crossbars uh, to give it, you know, a little more ornamentation. Um, no handles, obviously, as the doors, I would presume, swing out um, from the inside. Same uh, wood styrene um, for the planking behind the doors and uh, just cut it to fit basically, sanded it down and slotted it in. A little more rusting work on this and uh, really, again, I just can't say enough about that Model Mates weathering liquid. Really, really does this simple kind of a rust effect very believably and pretty easily. One problem with the door, you can see right here, um, this little aberration here, this is from um, super glue. I haven't been using a lot of super glue on uh, projects and I watched the uh, mini wargaming videos on terrain and they're using super glues all over the place, including a foam safe super glue, which I just purchased. Expensive, but um, nice al uh, alternative to other kinds of adhesives when you need something quick and strong. But the super glue bubbled out, I mean, you know, blobbed out. I had too much. And then um, when I used the accelerator to dry it, it just, I didn't expect it to show that prominently. Um, I didn't go in and try to carve it out and fix it, but it does highlight the fact that I need to be a little more, a little more careful in the application of my adhesives to make sure that it doesn't create, uh, you know, problems with the final product. Um, then um, taking a look at these buttresses, all right, so you can see right here, it's dinging a little bit from the weight. This piece overall, because it has the two towers, um, it has a significantly larger mass than the sidewalls. And uh, leaning this forward has really, um, you know, put a, a bit of stress on those. And you can see even at this angle, right, it's a little bit off the table there. I, okay, we're nitpicking, but this is something that could accrue over time. And I wanted something that this is not only good, I want it to look good, I want it to play well. I want it to be durable as well. So definitely I'm going to give some real serious thought to how to fix this in the future. And again, basing it um, with, a, with a, a small base. It doesn't need to be large. Um, something that comes out would be uh, one way to fix it. Of course, though, depending on what the customer's table surface is like, you know, matching that's an issue. Um, so, you know, my original thought was to not base it. Uh, so we'll have to chat about it and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, but again, you can see the stonework um, around the doorway um, definitely set off a little bit from the back. And I did a little brighter, um, you know, dry brushing on it just to make it pop a little bit. And I think that was overall um, fairly effective. Went in on the underhangs here and tried to darken them just a little bit to help accentuate that shadow. I'm trying to be subtle on it, but something that is noticeable. And um, I also went around the base and uh, airbrushed in um, a little darker. It's a black green color from Vallejo. And it kind of shadows that bottom just a little bit. Gives it, I don't want to call it a mossy look, but it, it definitely grounds the model a little bit to the table and gives it kind of a foundation. Um, and that, I think, really helped it as well. So uh, in conclusion, like I said, overall, I'm pleased with many aspects of this castle, but there's definitely some small things that um, need to be improved um, for the f final version. Um, cleaner lines. Um, oh, I forgot to show you, but I, I actually went in and dremeled out some of the lines in this area to um, see how that worked. And it, it did clean it up actually fairly effectively. So it's possible to go in after the foam coat has fully set up and just you know score out some of the areas that may have been filled in. Um, it, it's extra work that I'd like to avoid if possible though. So, but it is a possible correction after the fact. Uh, once I, um, I have to cast up the doors, the doors and the towers will be plaster. Once I cast those up, paint those up and insert those, and then I'll take photos of this. And this is going to go up in the um, clearance section of the website. Uh, and uh, that way um, I can, um, I'm going to open up the clearance section of the website even though the, the store is closed. There's a few things I need to photograph to put in that section as well. Some uh, modular boards that are old that have been sitting around. Um, an old style uh, slightly of a river set that will be going in there. Uh, so, um, I, and once I do that, I'll put a uh, note in the newsletter as well on the website and uh, we, you know that will be accessible. So if you're interested in purchasing it, you can go take a look. Pricing wise, I'm not sure yet. Um, I have to think about how much time I put into it, which was a lot, <laughs> but also um, you know recognizing um, some of its imperfections and uh, durability issues. Um, so it won't be you know quite as, as extravagantly priced as, it, as my time probably warranted on it. So. 
Um, hopefully you've enjoyed taking a look at it though, could draw a little inspiration from it. And um, now that this project is complete, I want to move right into the final version. Uh, this has given me at least the confidence to know that I can do the, um, uh, you know, the, the work directly into the expanded bead styrofoam, uh, styrofoam rather than the uh, extruded polystyrene. I'm going to need to do some new cuts um, to modify some of the floors of the uh, version that I had started uh, because I was accommodating some wall thicknesses that are changing. So um, a few minor modifications to that, and once that's cut, I can begin assembling it and start working on some of its details. So I hope to make some uh, rapid progress on that over the next two weeks. And of course, you know I'll keep you up to date on that as that occurs. Uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave questions and comments down below. And again, if there's something specific about its design elements and this is the first viewing, please go back and take a look at the other videos as I've been answering tons of questions on those. I mean, I'm happy to answer them, you know, but if it's something that's been answered before um, and probably some other ideas that maybe you hadn't considered, it's worth taking a look at some of those backlogged videos. Uh, I do appreciate you taking the time, though, to watch this one and keep your eye on the channel. I'll be back soon with another video.